yourself? That's all in there. It's the juice is not in his experience. The juice is in looking at what he had to go through. Now, I don't know for how many people in here would be very comfortable with having experience where you've now defecated in your pants. And you have two crazy loony Indians who have made you do this by whatever it is they did to you. And they're stripping you down and dumping buckets of water on you. Who's going to handle that experience around here? Huh? Yeah, right. But the thing people don't realize is that road is just that hard. You, what he had to experience, we may not have to experience the same things. We're in a different culture. We have different words for different things. Right? What they call, you know, some kind of dark shadow, we call psychosis. We call it schizophrenia. We call it, we have different names for the same exact things. Right? So he what basically Carlos did for me for two years was translate his experience into someone who's living uh, in the Western world. So from Central Mexico to you know, Southern California, Denver. It's, you're in a totally different world. But it still applies. Because they have different terminology because they have a whole different social milieu going on. That does not discount what they, what they say. We, we go, oh, they believe in all this crazy stuff. So do we. Isn't schizophrenia crazy? We believe in all this crazy stuff. Right, so it's just a different, um, different description of the same experiences. Right, so what I got to do in hanging out with Carlos is go through every dark aspect of my being at the time. See, a little before I met Carlos like three or four years before. That, I, I was one of those people that at 20 years old had the, you know, a night of intense realization. And it was very intense and it changed me drastically. And that next morning I was, I was on it. And I was doing it consciously. I wanted to know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, what was looking out of my eyeballs. I wanted to know where it was coming from and I wanted to know what it was capable of. I wanted to know if, yeah, what that was. Because, you know, everybody can be convinced that they know, but not necessarily. They don't necessarily know. Well, that's me. Really? That's, where's that? Where's that coming from? You know, I, I desperately needed to know that. Because I felt something so intense that I couldn't stop. I had to look. It, 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 you know, it's the, it's the epiphany moment. I don't know if you guys have had it. You know what I'm talking about. That massive realization. Not, oh, I realize I'm being this. It's, it's like, <laughs> it's life altering. You wake up the next morning, your behavior has changed. Do you understand what I'm saying? When you have the moment where your, your screwed up behavior or whatever it is you're having <coughs> an issue with, you, you get to a point where you realize it so well that it, it's gone. You wake up and your behavior has changed. Not because it flew away, but because it had attention put on it. Do you understand what I mean? And it changes, that's this whole gig of waking up, of becoming enlightened, it's a behavioral gig. Well, who, what are you, enlighten the soul? Are you enlighten what's looking out of your eyes? I don't think so. It's not the one with the problem. It's our outward being. It's the one that we mingle in the world with. That's the one with all the problems. Right? So, for two years, I got the crap beat out of that part of me. I, I was going places when I was, you know, quite young. And then I met Carlos, and he's like, you know, you've got a lot of great, 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 blissful things happening in your life. What about this? Oof. It was full of darkness full of the most, whoa, scariest crap I've ever seen. 
No, I never actually defecated in my bath. I came very close. Because while I'm sitting there talking to Carl, it's the first night I met him. He's sitting across from me. He's reading my thoughts. I can't hide any of this. Any of my apprehension, any of my fear, any of my whatever I got going on. And he starts to light up. I mean, it's... It, I don't really know how to explain it other than just imagine someone going luminous from here. Right? And as he, as this is happening, he's dematerializing. Clothes and shoes and all. Suddenly when I'm sitting there and I'm seeing this blue thing shaped kind of, shaped kind of like this. And I could see through it. And when I saw through it, the pine tree is on the other side. And it's wavering in this undulation that's going on in the middle of it. Right? Now when this is happening, and I can't see him, not physically, but there's that presence <laughs> pulsating. Every time it would pulsate, I'd feel it. And it felt like there was a hand here <laughs> and a hand here pulling, stretching um, perception. Every single time. And then I heard him in my head. I heard him talking to me. And then he shows back up. And as he's showing back up, that vibe, boom, boom. Right? And it's kind of funny, because over the years, I noticed that. There are times when people can really be up at a higher level, and they know it. But at a certain point, And it's funny because what gets eradicated in the presence of someone like that is the desire to come back down. The desire to reintegrate yourself into the choices other people are making for you. To reintegrate yourself into the network, so to speak. You know, that. It was, it was probably easier for me because I was already bent on, um, you know, Don Juan had said to Carlos once, he's like, because Carlos was mentioning the world, and what's going on, and he's like, you know what, you just take your attention off, off that. Don't, don't waste your time thinking about what man's doing in the world. And I've, I've pretty much been like that. I don't care. Because if it's all limitation, it's all uh, description, it's all interpretation, there's no experience in it. It's the same thing over and over and over again. You get a job, you go to work, you, you, do, it, you do 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 it. It's, there's no, no pulse there for me. I don't know if there is for anyone else, but there isn't for me. <coughs> the pulse was, is, is in here. That doesn't mean you don't go out and do stuff. Right? But it's for totally different reasons. Your, your whole way of doing it changes. I, I was never really interested in, in, in any of this. Any of what, I mean, you, well, you're going to the moon, nuclear power, and like, yeah, whatever, whatever, whatever. What I'm interested in, what I will always be interested in, is, hmm, what is this, again, what is this thing looking out of my eyeballs? And where is it looking from? Do I know anything about it at all? Carlos basically made me realize that I don't. Now, most people will go, uh, what's that? That's nothing. Because they, they think too much. Experience what's looking out of your eyes. Don't talk about it. Don't convince yourself you know where it's coming from. Just look out and feel where that is coming from. I mean, there's your, 